Unacceptable, tragic, frightening, just a few of the words used to describe violence in Chicago, but a recent shooting has captured the city's attention differently. 16-year-old Shondell Holliday shot dead outside the Bean at Millennium Park. I'm Stephen Graves with CBS News Chicago. Shondell was part of a youth mentoring group here at Gary Comer College Prep. The program meant to help keep young men out of violence. His life gone way too soon though, but he leaves behind a lot of friends and brothers in that group. We wanted to know from them how are they are dealing with the loss of one of their own. What are their hopes and dreams for the future? Their fears, challenges. This is what they had to say in their own words. Every setback, every setback is a setup. It's a setup set for greatness. For greatness. Every failure, every failure is a ladder. It's a ladder towards greatness. Towards greatness. Every goal, every goal is applied. Is applied towards my greatness. Towards my greatness. Every life experience, every life experience enhances my greatness. Enhances my greatness. Every task, every task perfects my greatness. Perfects my greatness. The divine, the divine guides my greatness. Guides my greatness. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. I am. Greatness in the making. Greatness in the making. What is it like to do that every time you come to this class? It gives you the sense of empowerment the second you walk into the building, knowing that you're something, knowing that you have the ultimate goal to be something. So once you believe that, you ingrain that in your mind, you say it over and over to yourself, and then you put the step in, the work in, the goals in, to achieve that, so that then you become something great. How I'm feeling today I ain't gonna lie. I'm not really feeling good today because I like I said, I lost a very close friend to me. And like, like Jonathan said, a leader, pain, hurt in the past, but like sometimes you can't get over stuff. And like, that's right here, that's something I'll never get over. You feel me? So emotionally and physically, I'm not going, doing good right now, but I'm glad Mr. Singleton gave me a chance to come and talk how I feel about my close friend. And like, you feel me? All I want to say, I really miss him. And it hurt, you feel me? It really hurt me to yeah, you see my brother gone. He was a brother to me. Like, he was like, like, like I was telling Mr. Singleton and him. Like, he was a person that uh, put himself in harm's way to protect somebody he loved. Like, he was just, you feel me? He was just cool, for Like, it's like, he was just like that person. Like, you will always want to be around. Like, you could like go in a room and have a bad attitude or like just come in on a bad attitude and you see Shondell, he'll make you laugh or something like that's the type of person he was like no matter what, how mad you made him or not, he'll always have a, you feel me, he'll never let that disrupt what he got going on or his feelings because he always going to continue with a good attitude and a good, you feel me, he always, and then like, like most days like, even outside of school, like, sometimes he motivated me. He motivated me some days. Some days he'll call me, like, brother, you good? Like, check up on me. Like, he'll motivate me sometimes, like, to keep it going. Like, because sometimes I be feeling like giving up. Sometimes I be feeling like, feel me, school not for me, to be honest with you. And, like, my brother sometimes tell me, like, keep doing it. Keep going. Like, and for him to be gone, that hurt. I don't think that, vi first one thing I like to say is that I don't think that video should be online. And that wasn't the type of guy Shondell was. Shondell was the type of guy to stay home. Even if he having a bad day, he'll still find a way to make you smile and make you laugh. Because one thing me and Shondell always said, you never know what type of day everybody else having. You can't just be selfish. That's one thing Mr. Singleton taught us. Yeah, you can't be selfish because Mr. Singleton didn't have to come back to Chicago and do this mentoring program and give back to us. But he, but he's back. Everybody that's in champs, they didn't, they graduated college, did something productive. They didn't have to come back and do that, but they did. So it's like. If Mr. Singleton have a bad day, you will never know because he always got a smile on his face. He's keeping us motivated because whenever he motivated, it motivates us because when you want to see when you want to see your brothers win, they going to want to see you win. So we all got to uplift each other and see each other grow. And that's what Shondell did. Just because that one video showed of his last moments don't mean that's what the type of person he was. The video shouldn't be online. And I agree because it's, it's a disturbance video. And then people want to post it and stuff, like, that's not really cool to see that because he probably wouldn't want that video up there himself because then people go remember him as that. Not like, not having him in, in my classes like I normally would be is like so sad and like, I still don't believe he going either. 
But like, I know he in his room with us right now, watching. He was one year younger than me. And like, that was my big brother. Like, I don't care. Like, you feel me? Like, I know how old I am, but like, people don't know that he was one year younger than me. And I always called him big brother. Like, that's my big brother. You feel me? And like, my big brother gone. And like, it hurt, but like, I know we gotta keep going. You feel me? You gotta keep your head up. You gotta keep going for him. He won't want violence. He won't want none of that. All we gotta do is keep praying and just, you feel me? Stay with his people. Stay with his, help them. You feel me? You just gotta be in good spirits for him. And like my mama always told me, you feel me? You could do everything through Christ. You feel me? So as long as I got the blood of Jesus with me, I know I'm gonna be good. But at the same time, like I said, this something I'll never get over. My big brother gone, and I can't get him back. I wasn't as close to him as everybody, but I, you know, I used to shake his hand and say, what's up, in the hallways, I seen him in class, because he was always a cool person. How I really like, you know, connected with him was playing sports, playing basketball in the gym. And he was always a real competitive person and cool. Like, we used to chalk trash, and, you know, I used to win some, he used to win some. I miss, you know, doing stuff like that. So, like, that's how I remember him. He was always, you know, chill, laid back, you know what I'm saying? He was the type of person, you know what I'm saying? Like they were saying, he would fight for his family and for his loved ones. And I would really miss him. I ain't gonna lie. Like, that's hurtful. Like, that's hurtful. Like, my homie gone, folk. I can't get him back. And like, it hurt. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, it hurt. Like, my homie gone, folk. Like, I can't get him back, folk. Like, I can't get him back. And a person who did locked up, but what that's gonna do? My homie gone, and you living. Hey, you get to keep your life, but he gone. Like, you get to keep your life, but he gone, bro. Like, you get to live, and he just gone. And everybody just post up, just, it's okay because of the shooter locked up. Because he locked up, bro. Like, that's not cool, bro. He gone. Like, he wasn't even no grown up, bro. He didn't get to see 18, not even 17. And he gone. Like, like ain't nobody never going to get over that. this hurt. When we finally talked to Shondell's mom, I, I was finally able to get some sleep because I felt that peace because I was able to talk to his mom about the situation and see how she felt. And, Cause we don't know what she actually deep down going through because we haven't we haven't we're we're still kids that that was her son, so we don't know what she feeling um, about losing her son, and I know she feeling I know she feeling bad right now, but she know that at the end of the day we got her son back thick through thick and thin, and we got her back too, and we know she know that we gonna take care of Shondell Simmons the way he take like the way he took care of him because. Like we always knew that Shondell took care of his brothers and sisters, and it was some, that was good. So I want to, I want her to know that I'm here for her and I'm here for her family, because I don't want none of y'all to go through that. Like I said, um, I want to say I was it wasn't good for me because I've seen I've seen my mom cry before. I've seen a mother cry, and it's not a it's not an easy feeling, you know. Um, just just sitting there and hearing the sorrow and the sadness in her voice was not it was not easy for me cuz i've i've experienced hearing hearing my mom cry on on multiple occasions and this this it wasn't it wasn't okay but you know i hope that she's okay now you know when we were speaking to her, it felt good, you know, just to see how she felt, like, see where she was coming from, see, like, how she was doing since she heard the news about her son. Like, she was telling us all some things about him, like, that we didn't know about, like, how he liked playing on um, the piano and how he made a studio in his closet. Like, it's a lot of stuff we ain't know about Shondell, you know, and he really was a cool person, you know. And his mama cool, too, you know. She was she was calm, you know. She was, she was just, how to say it, interacting with us. You know, and I like that. Some of us, we, we real lie, gotta wake up and smell gun smoke in the morning. Some of us wake up to, we first thing we turn on our TV, we see one of our close family members down, or one of our homies down, or one of us, we was just fighting down. You feel me? Like, you feel me? Some of us go through this type of stuff, like, 
we like some of us really do need a gun to walk around. You feel me? Like, like I can't say like off of speaking on that, like, to be honest with you, that's a lot of stuff that's going on in Chicago. Like, you got your own people killing you type stuff. Like, somebody you call your friend could kill you the next day type stuff. Like, you feel me speaking on that? Like, people really go through stuff, like, and people got to look at how we live in the street. You feel me? How we, what we got to go through when we go home. Like, you feel me? Like, some of my homies, they can't go home after they go to school because they'll get beat on by their daddy or something. Like, you feel me? Some of my homies real loud. Like, I stay outside with some of my homies till like 12 a.m. just because they don't got nowhere to go or something. Because of, cause of they get neglected or something. You feel me? Like, we go through stuff in the streets. You don't know what can happen at any moment. Even if you never did nothing innocent, like you could just like a little kid, they could be like sit down with a little kid with my dad, so I'm walking down the street and then, and then it's like a shootout and I end up getting hit and dying or something. Or like I could just be my my business with my with my friends and something end up happening. Just like when I was downtown, a, a lot of stuff happening. Not just him dying. It was stuff it was just other stuff that was happening. And then it was like the police ain't even cut. They just making it worse than what it has to be. And then I only said, cause like at any moment I could just like, you can be good, but at the same time, you gotta also be aware because like, look at the city that we stay, even in like the goodest place on earth, something go happen. So like you always got <clears throat> like be aware and cautious of like your surroundings and stuff. At the same time, you still gotta like have fun. Been through a lot and like, you feel me? Like I'm tired, I'm tired of losing people. I'm tired, like, it's getting old now. I'm tired of losing people, like, if we all don't stop, who gonna stop? Like, when the cycle gonna end? And we need to get these young men involved in CHAMPS, cause you know CHAMPS is a male, a male mentoring program, and like Mr. Singleton, he giving back to us, not he just giving back to the school that he principal, he also giving back to many other schools in Chicago. He got, he got CHAMPS organization all over the world. CHAMPS is a nationwide organization, um, it's international. And with that being, we have to work. We have to work with our, inside of our city first, and then expand outside more. Even though we are already in our city, I feel like we need to do more. I feel like we need to get these young men <clears throat> on like to, to some of these programs. We got programs every Saturday. I know we listen to a lot of rappers. Like we recently just met Lil Durk at the White Sox Stadium. Like I know a lot of people who look up to Lil Durk, and if they see Lil Durk doing something positive, they're gonna want to do something positive too. So it's like you look up to your role model, you're gonna do some your role model doing. So I feel like. We need to get them in chess because, as you can see, like we doing something positive while like we in school, we doing what we supposed to do. You don't see us, you don't see us outside with guns and doing all this other stuff, because at the end of the day we want to graduate college. We don't want to see our moms hurt. Like like yesterday, I met Shondell's mom. You can tell how hurt she is by losing her firstborn, her oldest, and I don't want nobody in this room to for their mama to feel that pain, cause. We don't know what Shondell and Mama going through. Our mothers have never experienced something like that. My mama, my mother was a victim of gun violence, but luckily she made it through. And like, I wouldn't have been her if she didn't make it. So I don't want nobody, Mama or Mama, Daddy, nobody, family going through pain that Shondell and Mama felt. And I feel sorry for her because she said that that was her first time letting her son outside. And for her son, first time letting him outside, he lose his life. And I'm not going. That's not her fault. It's it's the community fault because they feel like they gotta. They feel like they gotta carry a gun to feel protected. They feel like they can't just walk outside and feel protected at the end of the day. So I feel like what we need to do is get these boys and champs. We all uh, chuck it up on like the adults and we'll say, well, the adults aren't like parenting these kids right. We'll say it's the parents' fault. But at a certain point, we have to take responsibility and say, I myself have failed because these are all my brothers, right? Brothers are supposed to look out for each other. We're supposed to stop this before it even got to this point. So, like, as a community, as the youth, we need to reach each other because we can't all just leave it up on the parents and all the adults around. We have to save each other because we all we got. This is a brotherhood, and we always, we're going to fight for each other. Never let your past make your future because if you let your past make your future, you know, you're not gonna have what you wanted. So don't always think, everybody's not gonna have that God in hand. 
You got to be your own guiding hand sometimes. I, I was blessed to have my mom and my grandma and my family as my guiding hand, but everybody's not going to have that. So for everybody you know that's listening to me, I just want them to know that you got to strive for your own self. You got to be, you know what I'm saying, be great for yourself. So to know that there's people in here in this same room that I'm going to love and they're going to love the same way I love for them, it's just, it makes me happy because, like, you know, Sean Dale, he was a brother to me. Like, we weren't all that close, but he was a brother to me. No matter what, everybody in this room going to be a brother to me no matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what you do. Like, it don't matter what you say to me. That's going to make me stop having love for you because this is, like, all we got in Chicago is us. Like, we have to have each other no matter what. Like, that's, that's just how it is nowadays. You got to have each other back always. So whatever happens, I'm going to always try my best to be there for you. And I know that you're going to always try your best to be there for me. So just having this brotherhood just keep me proud. You know, that's a, that's a reason I got to push for him too. How many of you see challenges ahead? Challenges as being a black man, period. Challenges of walking around and you just getting shot for no reason of mistaken identity. Or, or the police messing with you just because of the race you is, or how you walk, or just because we got to wear a ski mask because the wrong person might see us and might try to kill us. The challenges of just being in this community, being in this space. The challenges of you trying to strive for what you doing, and you feel like you ain't going to make it and you giving up. For challenges wise, I feel like for any color person, it's not, and for black males in general, it's not the, the system. It's just not meant for us to succeed. It's not meant for us to succeed. Succeed. It's meant for us to fail. That's why you see a lot of black men failing. And you see, like, if I have to walk outside, I, I can see a whole bunch of homeless people, right? And, and there's no one doing nothing to help. You know what I'm saying? So it just it's, this system is not meant for us to succeed. The test, none of that. It's all meant for us to fail. But us, as black men, we know that we gotta be 10 times smarter than we normally have to be to pass. And I think people underestimate how smart you all are. And if you were to just tell people in general who watch the news, who see the videos, who are not black, what would you say to them about your, who you are and your motivation? Well, what I would have to say is that don't, don't judge us by our skin or our color. Everybody is not the same just cause like, if, I'm gonna say this, if I see a, a different person that's a different race do something that's crazy, I'm not gonna judge that whole entire, the race. whole entire race, oh, oh, I'm not gonna just put a, a label saying, oh, they, they're crazy, they're this, they're that, because it's really not true. You got people who don't wanna make it, and people who actually wanna make it. And you know what I'm saying? I just feel like, be more positive, because you never know what that pe person could do for you. Like, you never know. It's a lot of positive black males out here doing something like It's more than what you see than just the violence part. They only want to show, if you, if you pay attention to the news, sometimes you don't, they don't really shine light on a lot of the positive stuff. They mainly want to show the bad stuff. They want to show, oh, another black male killed in Chicago, another male this and that. They don't want to show that. They don't want to show that we was just outside doing something positive, just planting, just planting um, vegetables and stuff. They don't want to show that we just met with a famous rapper, t him talking to us, telling us, oh, you could do it, keep pushing, don't stop. Because he didn't stop with his rap career, he pursued his dream, he chased his dreams, he didn't let his dreams get away. It's a lot of males out here, a lot of black people out here doing what they're supposed to do. See, I've been going through losing my grandfather, but it, it, Champs has shown me, like, make that a motivation. Make that something that's going to make you better than who you is right now. So that's why I'm actually taking Shondell, Def S something that's gonna push me, something that's gonna make me better me, something that's gonna build me to become stronger and tougher, have tougher skin, all of that. But also, it's like losing my brother is just sad, you know? But at the same time, like I'm saying, I'm skeptical about me. Like, I feel as we not doing enough, not Mr. Singleton and not the elders that's coming in, because I feel like they doing more than just enough, more than enough. I feel like these boys in, there, in here right now, plus more, need to get outside and get into their community and do stuff for their community. We don't need no other parent to come tell us what we should and shouldn't do. We should understand the fact that a lot of stuff around our, in our community is going on and it is not helping nothing. So what should we do? We should come to our senses and say, okay, we need to come as a group. We need to make our own group, a youth group, and go outside and help every community we can.
you still got to know what's going on right now because if you think it too far ahead, you're not going to be able to go, what's, know what's going on right now. And what's going on right now is like we trying to make it. We trying to we trying to make it to sophomore year. Sophomore year is going to be a big year because, you know, that's when you got to, that's when colleges start looking at you and stuff. And especially if you're an athlete, like you got to work hard. You got to put that grind in no matter what. Like that grind not going to stop because people around us are passing away like, like like Jalen said, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Shondell on my back. Shondell is another reason why I'm gonna why I'm gonna push harder. I wanna say, I love everybody in this room. You know, it's unconditional love in here. You know, and these ain't even just words. This is this is truth coming from my heart. You know, that's all I want to say. Never be afraid to look within yourself and identify a failure within yourself. Because if someone were to look upon me a few years ago, they wouldn't see the same thing that they see today. And a lot of times that actually did happen because a few years ago I was doing a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. I was, you know, getting detentions back to back every day. Every class I get at least two, three detentions because we used to have detentions here before they took them away. You have demerits that added up to a detention. Before the end of the school year, I had about 120 of them. I was deemed non-promotable. But then eventually... I stopped pointing the finger at everybody else around me that I thought was doing wrong. Like, hey, she's just doing this because she wants to pick on me. I didn't do this, but every time you point that finger, it's attached to you. It always comes back to you. What are you doing? So then you start to look within yourself and heal yourself and start to notice. If I do this, I bet they won't act this way. So let me do this so that I don't have to go through this. And then you keep doing that and you start to heal yourself and you start to begin to elevate and reach bigger things in life. And I feel like everyone should try to look within themselves and find something that can change. Even if it's the smallest thing ever, it doesn't matter. Find something that you can fix and mend and make it better so that you can grow. And then eventually you'll see everyone around you start to do the same thing. If you are producing positivity and radiating lights around you, everyone will want to follow you. First to graduate, I'll be attending UIC in the fall for accounting. And with that, I would like to, once I'm settled in, I would like to start investing into buying properties for our south side of Chicago so then we can bring more equity to the community. And then also to come back to Champs, like help out, like help these kids. Because I feel like with the violence that's going on, I feel like one of the main problems is that a lot of people don't know how to identify a purpose in their life. And I feel like purposelessness evokes problematic situations. And then from there, your character defines what you'll do from there. And since we are growing up, a lot of us with single parent households, a lot of us don't know what to do once we get into those situations. And so then from there, we do what we're trying to do through social media. And those situations are unnecessary. I want to say the number one goal that I would hold near to me is um, to make sure my mom is happy before she, uh, before she ascends, you know. Um, you know, I hold my mothers dear to my heart, you know, because um, um, I have two mothers, you know. Um, and it's not easy, you know. I have one that's locked up now, and I'm living with another one. You know, I don't call her my stepmom, I call her my mother. Because you know, if she is taking care of me when she didn't have to. One of my goals is to make it, like, to be able to be a, to make it through high school for my mama. Because, like, I'd be, like, one of the first males in my family to actually do something good. And, like, I don't want her to get that phone call or nothing. Because I know it hurt her. Because, like, I'm her firstborn. And like, and, yeah, and like after, and if I do succeed that, I I wanted to be like a, I want to go to like a space program to be um, an astronaut. The so two goals I have is to make it and be successful in, and successful in life. And for my mom not to have to bury me because I know that would hurt my mom. And I know she wouldn't take that very well. And that could cause, you know, that can cause a lot of damage to her and I want to make it because my mom all she ever wanted for me is to do good that's why she do the things she do for me and she always working and breaking her neck just so I can have the things that I have today so that's why I want to make it and make sure my mom doesn't have to you know see me 
dead. Saying my biggest goal too is to make my mama proud. You know, my mom been through so much, like she had to quit jobs because I was getting in trouble and things like that. So all I want to do is make sure my mom good where she don't have to work no more. Make sure my little sister good in a nice neighborhood where she can go outside and play and don't have to worry about people shooting or having to run and stuff from bullets and things like that. My biggest goal is to make my mama proud. Um, also, make myself proud because everything I'm doing is for her, but in order for me to do it, I got to do it off the strength of myself. Like, nobody wanted better than I do. When kids come back to Chicago after being gone for so long, like, something happened to them. And I don't want nothing happening to my mama worrying about, oh, my son gone after coming back to Chicago, the place where he was born, just because he's going to go see his father or some of his family members. So um, I just want to see my mama proud. I want to see her smile. Um, after I, 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 out of all the hard work I've been putting in. If Mr. Singleton would want to read the list of Shondale's goals, I would like to take one of his goals and like make it one of mine. Make it one of mine because like I know that he'll want someone else to continue his goals for him and make it for him just because he couldn't because of what happened. And what I want to say, I want to appreciate my mom and my dad because like they both been trying to like help me out, like paying for school fees, all that knowing. Barely my mom got it right now. And then like my dad, he's he's there, like he's helping me out, like sports, all that. He's helping me because like when I graduate, I wanna get my CDLs, I wanna drive trucks. And my dad drive trucks and like he's helping me out now, so I already know what I'm doing. So I just wanna say I wanna say thank you to both of them. Honestly, my goal just changed today. My biggest goal, make Shondell proud. I ain't, I ain't worried about, like, I ain't gonna, I ain't trying to, like, bash y'all or nothing like that. But all that mama stuff, make my mama proud, all of that, that's gonna happen either way for me. Like, my mama everything. So that's gonna automatically happen. So, like, just put that in y'all head that making y'all mama proud, that's an automatic goal. Make something else y'all grow. So Shondell, rest in peace to him. Making him proud, even though he ain't physically here, but he met him mentally to me, I'm gonna make him proud one day. I ain't going to lie, make it to 15. Yeah, I made it to 15. Like, who could really say that you made it yet? You feel me? Like, this just changed everything for me. Like, this, this one right here, this hurt. But one goal I can say is, I ain't going to lie. And I talked to Mr. Singleton about this goal, too. And he asked me, why did I choose this? And I don't think I never told him. But like, it's been the same goal always, to make it to 17, to be honest with you. And why is that? Do you explain why that is? Mm -hmm. Man, now I gotta explain it. Like, as you feel me, y'all should already know, violence. Like, what we go through, like, you feel me? Like, nobody will never know what I really, what I really going through unless I speak on it. And I don't speak on what I go through. I like to keep, like, what I learned is don't keep stuff holding in because that's going to bring you more, you feel me? And like, ever since I was young, I've been going through stuff, like, and I've been holding it in. And it's like, can't hold it in no more. And the reason I say make the 17 is because, to be honest with you, one, I know this, everybody fell, but you feel me? I'm afraid to die and not to die, to be honest with you. Like, cause I know God gonna call me one day. One day gonna be mine, you feel me? One day everybody gonna die. Everybody just can't stay on this earth forever. You feel me? One day everybody, the rapture gonna come. Like, people that weren't supposed to die, God gonna take them anyway. So you feel me? Like, so it ain't that I'm afraid to die. It's the way I'm afraid to die. You feel me? Like, you feel me? I don't wanna, I don't wanna be like all my homies die from gun violence. Like I don't wanna be that homie that die again. Like I wanna end a cycle, for Like I ain't gonna lie. I want everybody to make it. To be honest with you, no matter if we into it, if we hate each other, I want everybody to make it. To be honest with you, cause uh, this just, this just showed me something. I ain't gonna lie. Our thanks to those young men for sitting down and sharing with us. Vondell Singleton as well, the founder of Champs Male Mentoring and the Gary Comer Youth Center behind us for hosting us. You can find much more coverage on cbschicago.com. Thank you for joining us. 
setback. Every setback. Every setback is a setup. It's a setup for greatness. For greatness. Every failure. Every failure is a ladder. It's a ladder towards greatness. Towards greatness. Every goal. Every goal is applied. It's applied towards my greatness. Towards my greatness. Every life experience. Every life experience enhances my greatness. Enhances my greatness. Every task. Every task perfects my greatness. Perfects my greatness. The divine. The divine guides my greatness. Guides my greatness. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Greatness in the making. Greatness in the making.